Okay, so welcome everyone. I know that on Zoom it still says conditioning for backbends and for inversions. Um, well, now it's more like conditioning for yoga. So we'll do all of our joints and we'll do some hips, some shoulders today. And like last week that we were working more with shoulders for backbends, it's going to help you for your backbends. It's also going to help you for lotus pose and for all of the poses that meet external rotation of the hip, like bringing the leg behind the head and off the head and all of that. You will need a block. I actually uh, don't have a block in Barcelona, so I just used um, like a Tupperware, like a container. So you can just use a container or books. So get your block, blocks or books, um, and then we'll get started. Here we are. Okay. Just giving it a second for people to find their props and for people to connect. Today's practice is basically um, a bit controversial. It's not a yoga practice, but it's different exercises that condition your body. And my yoga teacher here, Alex Al Aleix Grigno, you want to look him up. He taught me a lot of this stuff, so that's what we're doing today. We'll start with the rotations of all the joints. Now, there's two things to remember. You want to engage your whole body throughout all of the exercises, which means that especially if you're warm, so if it's the afternoon where you are, then you want to go up to up to like 70, 80, 90%, really engaging the whole body and you even feel your body like trembling. If it's more like the morning or you're a bit stiff, then go to 60%. But do engage the whole body throughout uh, so that you can actually isolate the joints with the whole body engaged. That's valid for the first exercises, for all the joints. And then when we work with hips and shoulders, you work with your whole body, just isolating the movement with the specific rotation we're working with. So we'll start with toes. So come to a seated position with your feet in front of you. And as you inhale, again, inhale, find strength through the abdomen and take it to the whole body and then keep that tension in the whole body as you breathe. Start with the right toes, bring the big toe up and then the four toes. The big toe and then the four toes. At first, this might not be very easy to do, but you get better at it as you try. So do your best. Just the big toe, and then just the four toes, and then relax. Second, second foot, left foot. Bring the big toe up, and then the four toes. Keep the whole body engaged throughout, and the four toes. Big toe, and four toes. One more time, just the big toe, and just the four toes. Just notice an inconsistency. It's feedback, we're going to the ankle. So you want to bring your right arm under your right leg, grab the left bicep, and then stop the shin from moving around. I repeat, right arm under, grab the left bicep, and bring your left hand on top of the shin. Stop the leg from moving, inhale and engage the whole body, and then move around with the ankle. Keep the foot as relaxed as possible and move just with the ankle joint and keep the shin as still as possible using the force of the arm. You see I do different tricks with my toes, that's not intentional. Ideally, you don't want to move the toes and just move the ankle around. I didn't talk about the second thing. So the, second, the first thing is that you engage the whole body. The second thing is that if you feel any discomfort, maybe it's fine, but if it's pain, then you kind of avoid that part. So you go around and if you feel restricted, then you take a gap and you keep going. Relax and then again, grab, engage the whole body, point, and then go for internal and external rotation of the ankle. Just the ankle moving, foot in a point. 
whole body engaged. The more you engage, the more you feel it, the more you can go into your range of motion and the less sounds you hear. I still hear some sounds, but it's going to be worse if I just abandon. Okay, so it's the same exercise with the arms. I mean, you bring the right arm under, you grab the left bicep, and then you take the left hand on top of the left thigh, the right thigh this time. So I'm isolating the thigh. And then from here, I find external rotation of the shin. So it's the knee joint now. The leg is, the, the bottom part of the leg is just relaxed. So knee, I engage the whole body, inhale, and then go up with that external rotation up to three quarters, find internal rotation and go down. Ideally not with the ankle like I did, with the knee. So go up, external, and go down. Stay engaged, go up, internal, go down, move with the knee. It's not a big rotation, but whatever you got, work it. One more, go up, keep the whole body engaged, and go up and internal rotation. Bring the heel down, take the hands on top of the knee, interlace the fingers, press the knee down, and again, work with the knee joint. External and internal rotation. External and internal, external, internal. One more, out and in. Release, other leg. Left arm under, grab the bicep, take the right hand onto the shin. Inhale, engage the whole body, the abs, the arms, the legs, and then move with the ankle joint. Roll it around one way, just with the ankle joint. Stay strong to really use that strength and that force to lubricate the joint. Go around, and then go the other way. Engaging, keeping the foot just neutral and moving with the ankle. Go as slowly as you can so that you really see where you can go with your range of motion and then relax. Grab the bicep and go for the top of the thigh. Grab the leg up and start with um, internal rotation. Go up to three quarters, external and go down. External, go up, internal. Whole body engaged. Go slowly, play with the movement. And then take the heel down, interlace the fingers on top, push, and engage the whole body. Neutral spine. And then from there, internal and external rotation of the bottom part of the leg. I'm literally sweating because you have to put all that strength to your whole body and focus with the knee moving. One way, rotating one way and then the other. Release. Good. Let's come to our knees. Let's work with the wrists. So palms forward, palms facing up, arms, forearms forward. We want to Press the elbows onto the body, engage the abs again, and then imagine that you have a, something on top of your forearm, like a book or a, your phone, and that it's your favorite book and it's a new phone, and you're standing at the edge of a cliff. You don't want the phone to fall. So keep the forearms facing the way they're facing. And then extend the wrists, go in, up, work with the flexion, out and work with the extension. Don't move the forearms. In, up, out, and down. If it's too much, you can do one arm at a time. In, up, out, and down. Keep the palm straight. Up, out, and down, and go the other way. Out, up, in, and down, don't move the forearms, out, up, really flex, out, in, and really extend, one more time, 
engage the whole body. Extend the palms, the arms, and then pull the belly in. And you need to come to um, kneeling up. From here, we find internal rotation. We go up and we go to external rotation. So external, we go up and we go internal, turning the palm down. Up to three quarters. Keep the shoulder blades down the back. Keep the head relaxed. And work with the biceps. Feel how the biceps are so strong, contracting to lift the, leg, the arms. Work with the elbow joint. One more time. Forearms up and down. Uh, and then come up. And let's do the queen salutes. Up. And in, out, keep the belly engaged, keep breathing. Good, release, relax. Arms in fists, pull the shoulders back, the shoulder blades down, bring the chin in, and then move the chin to the right shoulder, but keep the shoulder blades down, move with the cervical spine. Bring the right ear to the right shoulder, and then go back, keep the shoulder blades down, left ear to left shoulder, chin to left shoulder, and then chin down. Two more times. Chin to right, ear to right, go back, keep the whole body engaged, left ear, chin, and down. One more time. Wake up the whole body, keep the shoulder blades down, and work with the neck, other way. Left, then ear, and go around to the ear, and chin, and down. Chin, ear, go back, keep the shoulder blades down the whole time. Chin, and down. Again, chin, ear, it's not about touching the ear, the, the shoulder, it's just going into that range of motion. Chin, and down, okay, the bonus one, keep the belly engaged, go one last round, stay strong, keep breathing. Release, bring your hands to your shoulders, elbows in. Very important to keep the lower back um, slightly curved. It's not really curved, but I don't want to, at any point, back bend. I want to work with my cervical spine, sorry, with my thoracic spine. So bring the ribs in, bring the hands to the shoulders, slightly flex your body. And then from there, we twist to the right, keeping the belly in, keeping the lower back where it is. We're not playing with the lumbar. It's a slight twist. And then from there, go to your back bend, rolling to the right, keeping the belly in, back bend from the thoracic. Go around to another twist, twisting to the left with just the thoracic, and then come down. Two more times, twist, keep the belly in, keep the hips grounded, go around, and come down one last time, keeping the belly in, experiment with your back bend with the belly in, just opening to the thoracic, go around, twist, and go down, left side, you can switch the arms, elbows in, shoulder blades down, pull the belly in, twist to the left, Go around, twist to the right, go down. Keep the belly in, twist, back bend through the upper back. Find a twist on the right and go down. Keep the belly in, twist, and go around, keeping the belly in, and come down. One bonus one, go around, now that you know what you're doing, keep the belly in, open the chest, come to a twist and come back to center. Good job, okay. Cut cow, hands and knees. We're really isolating every part, every vertebra of our spine. So starting with the um, tailbone, the coccyx. Uncurl the tailbone, just the tailbone. Push away through the arms. Don't worry about the breath, just keep breathing and keep the belly strong, just the tailbone and then start to engage through the lower belly and start to curl the lower back, just the lower back. Keep on curling the tailbone, belly pulling. 
and then start to involve the middle back. I'm curling the tailbone, middle back curling, and then pull with the hands, start involving the upper back, push the shoulder blades back, and then start bringing the chin up to involve the head, cervical spine, chin up. You can tuck the toes down and you feel that your hips are shifting. When you find your range, pull back through the hands, push forward through the knees and arch a bit more. And then start to curl the tailbone down, pull the belly in, just the tailbone. The upper back is still in a back leg. Just the tailbone and then just the lower back. Keep the belly in, just the middle back. Pull back through the hands and start to round the upper back. Push forward through the knees, back through the hands and bring the chin in. When you find your range of motion, stay and push more through the knees, pull more through the hands. One more time, uncurl the tailbone, keep the lower belly in. Start just with the tailbone, the upper back is in a rounded position. Keep the lower belly in as you arch through the lower back, the rounded spine starts to get involved. Keep pushing forward through the knees, uncurl the tailbone, lower back and middle back. Start to arch and then pull with the hands, pull the shoulders back. Pull the shoulder legs together. Start to arch through the upper back. Pull back through the hands. Push forward through the knees. The whole body is engaged as you're breathing. Bring the head up. Involve the cervical spine. And one last time, we'll go to a round body. So keep your head up. Just the tailbone curls in. Keep the belly in. Pull through the lower belly. Just curl the tailbone under. Posterior pelvic tilt. Pulling the lower belly in. Start to involve the lower back. Then the middle back, keeping the belly in. Start to push forward through the knees. Sorry, yes, and then and then involve the rest of the body. Pushing, pushing, pushing. Okay, push forward to the hands, back through the knees. Strong. And slowly relax. Bring the right knee, the right foot forward, left knee down. Right hand in a fist, right hand in a fist to the side of the body, left arm in external rotation. Slightly curl the tailbone under, pull the belly in, pick up the rib cage. And from here we'll work with the shoulder. So we find that external rotation, starting in external rotation, we bring the arm in to a midline, keeping the whole body engaged through the midline of the body in front of the head. And then we start to turn the palm. Uh, towards the right, and then we find internal rotation, turning the palm out towards the left, out towards the left, back, back, my palm is back, it's turning out, and it's coming down into that internal rotation. And then to go up, you stay with the palm facing out. When you need to, start to turn the palm to face down, and start to find that external rotation. Keep your shoulder blade down, go up, up, and find that external rotation, palm facing up and palm facing towards the left. As you go down one more time, whole body engaged, palm up, then palm faces the ceiling, palm towards the right, internal rotation of the shoulder, which means that the palm starts to turn towards the left. Turn the palm towards the left, towards the back, towards the ceiling, palm towards the ceiling, internal rotation, press the right shoulder blade in and go out with the palm, internal rotation, go back, when you need to, start to turn external rotation. Palm out, push up, push the shoulder blade in, go in, go to the midline and turn the palm forward and out, other side. Right knee down, left foot down. Left hand in a fist, right arm out. So I start with the right arm facing out in this karate chop, pull the shoulders back, the shoulder blades down, pull the belly in, engage the whole body as you inhale, and then start to bring the palm in towards the midline, midline, midline of the body. When you find that eye level, you start to internally rotate by turning the palm towards the head. And then you keep the shoulder blade down as you go back. The palm faces forward and then towards the right. Keep the shoulder blade down. Palm faces towards the back. And palm turns out towards the right in this rotation, internal rotation. Go back. Start to externally rotate, turning the palm down, pull the shoulder blade down, go up, keep the whole body engaged, take the hand to the front along this midline, 
Okay, last one, bonus round, pull the shoulder blades down, palm towards the midline, pull the shoulder blades down. Start to internally rotate, which means that you turn the palm towards the front and towards the right, and then towards the back. And you press the right shoulder blade in, you turn the palm towards the ceiling and towards the right. Internal rotation. Go up, keeping the belly engaged. Go up, up, up. Turn, turn, turn. In external rotation. Go down. It's finally hips. Come to standing. Probably see I'm sweating. All right. You can grab onto the wall and bring the right arm in a fist. Pull the shoulder blades down. You don't have a wall, just two fists. Pull the belly in, right foot first. Point the foot and bring the knee in. And this lot variation. And turn the knee forward and open up the hip. Open hip and then internal rotate, which means that the foot wants to turn up. Keep the belly in, turn the foot up, and then take the knee back next to the knee. Good. Pelvis wants to um, stay forward the whole time, just playing with the hip. Go up, come back to neutral, and bring the knee forward, the foot in, and the foot down. Two more times. Keep that external rotation. Come up, open first, neutral. Keep the pelvis facing forward, find your limit, and then internal rotate. Pelvis keeps facing forward, foot goes up. And then go back, go in, and then come back. Turn, neutral, close, and find external and come down. Last time, just to understand what we're doing, this external rotation, I'm turning the hip out, keep the whole body engaged. Then you go to neutral, then you open up, in just neutral, open hips, then you find external. You turn the hip external, you turn the foot up, you take the knee back, and then you go back in external, you go back to neutral, forward, internal, and you count. Okay. Other foot. Go up in external, open, and find internal, pull the belly in, back, knee together, then open up, go back to neutral, and then come in, external, come down. External rotation of the hip, back to neutral, open hip, internal rotation, turning the thigh in, come back, and come in, and back, and around, and keep the whole body engaged as you go back to neutral, come back to center, find your range of uh, external and come down, last one. External, whole body engaged, open. Go to internal, turn the heel up, all the way. Keep the pelvis facing forward, and then go back, and go right, left, and then get back to neutral, and in, and external rotation as you come down. Good, that was our warm up. Hope you're feeling warm. Now we're going for the shoulder work. Okay, shoulder work. Today we're working with external rotation. If you need your blog or any container or book you're using, if it's a book, it better be a thick one. So the first exercise, I call it the weird hello. So you bring your right arm forward, 90 degrees, 90 degrees with the elbow. Pull the shoulder blade down. Here. And then from here, you bring the block and you place it against the um, lower bicep, the lower upper arm. You pull the shoulder blades down. First exercise, pressing against the block. You go for external rotation, just with the shoulder and then back to center. External, and then back to center. Keep the shoulder blades down, two more. External, go slowly, whole body engaged, just like we are doing before. And external, and back to center. Opening up to like 60 or 70 degrees. Keep pressing against this part, like the elbow and the lower bicep. Pull the shoulder blades down. Press away with the elbow, so I'm pressing with the elbow against the block. And I'm going again for external rotation. 
keep the shoulder blades down. Go back to center. Three more. Keep the belly in. Good. Okay. We're going to the um, commando exercise. Drifting commando, I call it. Drifting commando. So you need to come to a child's pose. Come back to your knees. And then you uh, bring the right elbow under the right shoulder. So you'll slightly shift the hips up. Or you can stay with the hips down and maybe tuck the toes under. Well, we're working with the shoulder. So just make sure that the shoulder is not being like compromised back. Keep the shoulder active over the elbow. Bring the block against the uh, lower, well, the upper uh, forearm. Press it. And then from there, you open up to your range of motion. But remember, it's just the shoulder opening. So open up through the shoulder, find a range of motion, and keep your block there just to stay there. So with your range of motion, it's not too much of a stretch, but you should feel it at the tissue of the shoulder. Pull the shoulder blades down, keep the spine neutral, and stay here for five deep breaths. We're doing five breaths where we're inhaling for five and exhaling for 10. So inhale, one, two, three, four, five. Exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Inhale. Exhale. Three more. Inhale. Exhale. Just focus on the shoulder. You might not be feeling it much, but you will be feeling it later. So stay here, inhale. And exhale. Last one, inhale. And exhale. Good. Okay, so now we're pushing through the shoulder against the block. So it feels like the forearm is pressing against the block and you go for 60% of your engagement. Keep the belly engaged and push with the arm in against the block for five. Push more, engage core for three, two, Push more with all your strength, and one. And then keep that tension and move the arm away. External rotation. Keep the tension, four, five. Try to move the arm away through the shoulder. Four, four, three, two, and one. Place the block there in the new normal. Take an inhale, engage the whole body. And then exhale, push against the block, push hard, 60%, engage the core, the legs, the arms, 70%, the chest, 80%, your body is trembling, 90%, push, four, five, keep the tension, four, three, two, and one. Keep the tension and move away through the shoulder. Might not be a big, Move, but keep working with the tissue of the shoulder. Keep the shoulder blades down. Four, five, four, three, two, and one. Place the block against the new normal. Inhale deeply. Exhale completely. And release. Good. American troop, I call this one. We get to the American position, which means that we come down. So you'll need two blocks or um, a block and a book. You cannot even work without blocks. It's just more efficient with the blocks. So you'll bring the first block under your elbow just so that the elbow is at shoulder height. So you rest down. Imagine that someone is pressing down against your shoulder blade, pulling the shoulder blade back. 
So the shoulder and the shoulder blades do not move. Arm in a fist and you keep the elbow at 90 degrees. So make sure that your shoulder and the elbow are alive. Pull the shoulder blades down and keep the, the fist at 90 degrees with the elbow. Now from here, we will place the other block at a high position so that the wrist is resting against the block. Again, you can use boots, but when you do this, again, make sure that your shoulder is down, shoulder blade back. You can place your forearm on top of the uh, left hand, the left or sorry, the forehead on top of the left forearm or the left hand. Now from here again, we just take five breaths first. You should feel something. If you don't feel it, you can place the block closer to the elbow so that you feel the opening of the shoulder. Again, it starts as a gentle opening. Keep the shoulder blades down the back and the shoulder press towards the ground. Don't leave the shoulder, don't move with the shoulder. Inhale. And exhale slower. Keep the shoulder blade down, the shoulder down, inhale. And then exhale slower. Inhale. And exhale slow. Okay. Now it's the same resistance exercises, first with lower intensity and then with higher intensity. We first press down against the block with the forearm. So I'm pushing down with my arm. Pull, keep the shoulder down, shoulder blades down. So keep the shoulder down to the ground and push four, five, 60%, engaging the chest, four, four. Pull the shoulder blades down, four, three, two, one. Now, imagine that you're bringing the arm away from the block. Probably nothing will happen because you don't want to lift the shoulder. Just lift some weight away from the block, four, five. Keep the shoulder down, four, four. Maybe you can just slightly lift the hand, four, three, but keep the shoulder down. Just feel that we're, we're working with the shoulder, four, two. And one, relax the arm. And then inhale deeply to the whole body engage. And exhale, press down, four, five. 90% of your strength, engage the core, the legs, the abs, the chest, four, four. Pull the shoulder blades down, the shoulder presses down, four, three, two, and one. Keep that same tension, 90% tension, and just imagine that you're lifting the hand up. You will feel it at the back of your shoulder, at the top of your shoulder. It's like an electrifying feeling, four, five. Keep shifting up, four, four. Shoulder blades down, four, three, two, and one. And then relax. Take a deep inhale and exhale. Release. Okay. Come up. Final thing for this shoulder. Come to kneeling position. And we're going back to our um, rotations. Shoulders back, shoulder blades down. Just go in, back. Keep the whole body engaged. Internal rotation. Send the palm back and up and to the right. Keep going. One more time. Keep the belly in, shoulder blades down. Come to the midline, then internally rotate. Send the palm forward, the palm to the right, the palm to the back. Pull back, the palm turns to the sky, the palm turns to the right. Internal rotation. And then go back, go up. Go around, go front, go to the midline, turn externally. Good. Left shoulder. Okay. Get your block and place your block against the left elbow, left hand inner fist. And we'll start. Okay, so push against the um, well, catch, push again the block. Pull the shoulder blades down, left hand in a fist. Four, five, pull the shoulder blades down. And then open and close. Externally, 
rotate and come back externally and come back externally and come back welcome to 60 or 70 degrees pull the shoulder blades down press against the block externally rotate we're hello and back rotating hello keep the belly in two more really go to your limit last one and go to your center back to your um, commando position so from a child's bring your uh, block against the left um, forearm left hand in a fist and find that limit as you bring your shoulder over the elbow find that limit use the block just to hold it pull the shoulder legs down and breathe breathe in for five four three two one breathe out ten nine eight seven six five four three two one in out in keep the shoulder blades down the neutral the spine neutral out one last breath in and out Low intensity first. Inhale, engage the whole body, the abs, the chest, pull the shoulder blades down, keep the shoulder over the elbow, and then push against the block with the forearm. Find 60% of your strength, engage tension, and five, four, three, two, one. Try to move the arm away, or five, Four, to the shoulder, external rotating, keep the shoulder blades down. Bring the block back to the new margin. Take a deep inhale here. Engage the whole body and exhale, push. Five, now stronger. Belly, abs, chest, shoulders, shoulder blades, arms, everything engaging. The legs, four, five, four, go to 90%, start trembling. Three, two, and one. Keep the tension and move the arm away. Four, five. Keep the shoulder feeling it. Four, pull the shoulder blades down. Three, two, and one. Bring the block to the new normal. Inhale. Exhale. And come back to your American position. Elbow at 90 degrees over the block. Come down first. You want to really rest down. Imagine you have a pet stepping on you or you have a person stepping on you. The, the person is not that heavy. You can stand it. But they're keeping your shoulder blade down, the shoulder blade back. Keep that happening. And then find the internal rotation and find your block. Again, you can be on the wrist or go further back to make it more intense. Again, relax first and breathe. Pull it, press the shoulder down, shoulder blades back. Four, five. Deep breaths. Exhale for longer than you inhale. Keep the shoulder going down, the shoulder blades back. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale deeper for ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Last one. Inhale. Five, four, three, two, one. 
x sen x sen 6 5 4 3 2 Okay, let's say for your passive stretch, inhale and engage the whole body. And exhale, push against the block. And 60%, keep the shoulder blade down. Four, five, four, press against the block. Two, and one with the same tension. Imagine that the arm is going out, even if nothing happens, keep the shoulder blade down. So that there's less weight on the block. Four, five, four, three, two, one. Relax. Inhale, engage the whole body. And exhale, press. Engage the legs, engage the belly, engage the chest. Pull the shoulder blades down. Engage the arms and press against the block. Four, five, four, three, two, and one. You start shaking and then you start bringing the arm away, four, five. Nothing might happen, but keep the shoulder feeling it. Three, two, and one. And then relax. And let's come back to kneeling position. See what happens now with your left arm, right arm in a fist, left arm in external rotating, and then parabola chop, go to the midline, go up. And then internal rotate as you turn the arm back, back, uh, palm facing back, palm facing to the left. And then go up, keep the left shoulder blade down. And then internal, external rotate, external, palm forward, palm towards the right, palm towards the sky, and palm towards the left. Keep the shoulder blades down, go up. Internal rotate, keep the shoulder blade down, turn the palm out, turn the palm back, uh, palm to the, to the back, palm towards the left. Internal rotation, and go right. Uh, external rotation, keep the shoulder blades down, keep the shoulder blades down, palm out, palm forward, palm towards the left. You can go one more time, or release. We'll go for our external rotation from our hips next. Ooh. Okay, first exercise. I call it, um, what do I call this one? So I'll explain it first. So you lie on your side, onto your right hip, right knee at 90 degrees, left leg straight. The image seems to be a bit better on Instagram, but maybe Instagram will tell us both soon. And then you grab the left foot. What you want to make sure is that your core is strong. So stay on your left elbow and keep your core engaged. You bring the foot up as much as you can. And then from there, we let go of the foot and we keep it up. Finding that external rotation that will help us to keep it up. And then we grab the foot again, we bring it higher. And when we let go and we keep it up high. And then we grab it, bring it up. And then we keep engaging. So we let go. One last time. Grab it. Bring it up. Feel that it's the hip that's being stretched. Engage the legs. Try to keep it up as you release. And then grab it. Maybe bring it a bit closer. And then take it down. Okay. The name will come later, I guess. Now we're doing the, uh, the pony lady. Yeah, first the pony lady, the lady pony. So from a hands and knees position or a knee, like a tabletop as it's normally called, um, you bring the right, right foot, right leg into a figure four. You press the hands down and then from here, depending on your flexibility, you might be able to bring the knee slightly back, but you want to keep the hips squared. So pull the belly in, Keep the neutral, the spine neutral, and bring, breathe here. You don't want to overdo it with bringing the knee back. It's pretty much at the same line as the heel. You just want to slightly feel that you're opening through the uh, right thigh. Pull the belly in and breathe for five, four, three, two, 
One, exhale, 10, nine, eight, seven. So tabletop in kids yoga is pony, at least in the kids yoga that I teach. And then this is lady pony, because we cross our legs, just like a lady. Okay, keep breathing with the exhale longer. Relax your head. This is a passive stretch. Just breathe into the hip. Hopefully you're feeling something to the right hip, the tissue. Exhale longer than you inhale. Just so that you know the push will be first uh, with the foot pressing against the ankle, pressing against the thigh. And then we feel that the heel goes away from the thigh, from the left knee. Okay. Last inhale for five, four, three, two, one. Exhale, 10, nine, eight. Keep the pelvis just neutral, the lower belly sucked in. Whole body engaged now. Inhale and engage through the belly, press through the hands. And then as you exhale, you push with the leg against the left knee. So press the left foot against the knee for five, 60%. Four, press against the hands, use the chest. Four, three, two, and one. And with the hip, start to remove the foot away from the left knee. Four, five, again, maybe nothing will happen. Keep the belly engaged. Four, four, just feel that it's all happening through the right hip. Four, three, keep the belly in, press away through the hands. Four, two, less weight onto the left knee. Four, one, good, relax. If you, well, no, there's no if. Bring the left knee a bit forward, just a bit, just a tiny bit, now that you're a bit more open. Keep the hips neutral, pull the belly, press against the hands, inhale, engage the whole body. And exhale, press the leg against the left uh, knee. Feel how the hip is being challenged for five. Engage 90%, pressing down to the hands, using the arms, the chest. The abs, four, four, three, legs are working, two, with the hip working, four, one, and then with the same tension, move the foot away, four, five, just the belly engaged, the hips neutral, four, four, feel the challenge at the right hip, four, three, keep external rotating, the right hip, four, two, and one, good. Come back, maybe press the knee just a bit forward, Inhale and exhale. Good. It's where the hip opener. No, we have the deer. Deer. Ah. So you come to deer pose. It's calf swastika. Right knee at 90 degrees, left knee at 90 degrees. If you don't feel it, then you send the sit bones back. You pull the belly in and up and you slightly move your chest forward just like a back bend. And feel the right hip opening. Breathe in, four, five, four, three, two, one. Breathe out, 10, nine, eight, seven, six. Okay, it's going too far, but you can breathe shorter breaths. Just make sure that the exhale is longer. Keep the belly engaged, the chest forward. Six bones moving back. Okay, so what's coming? Stay here because we need to be here for like 90 seconds before. So stay in your passive stretch just so that you know. We will first press down with the heel. The knee will not come up, but you feel that you're pushing down through the heel, and then we'll try to lift the heel. Even if it doesn't happen, uh, you'll feel it at the right hip. So inhale, engage the whole body through the abs. And then exhale, press the left heel down, four, five. Feel the whole body engaging, four, four, three, Two, the knee doesn't come up, but feel it at the right hip. Four, one, and then press the right knee down and try to lift the left heel. Four, five, keep the belly in. Four, four, 
nothing might happen. Just feel that the left, the right foot is weightless. Four, three, lifting it up, feeling it on the right hip. Four, two, and one. First, relax. Send the six bones back, chest forward, and inhale, engage. Exhale, press the left heel down. Four, five. Feel like the knee wants to come up, but don't do that. Just feel that it's from the hip. Four, four. Engage to 70, 80, 90%. Use your chest, your legs. Four, three, two, and one. And then from there, press the knee down. Lift the heel. Four, five. Pull the belly in. Four. Alex, uh, can you unmute yourself? Because uh, you disconnected for a little bit and now you're back, but it's muted. Unmute. You hear me now? Your connection was quite You bad. did get grounded deer. We finished with the deer. Now we're going for the cheerleader. So arms by your sides, hands in fists, and we're going for the same exercise we did before. Bring the legs up, in, out, back, and down, and back, and out, and in, and in, and down. One more, in, and up, and out, and external rotation, knee in, and come up, and come, and down. Now this is external, and come down. One last time, external, come up, Keep the whole body engaged, open. This is internal, internal rotation. Come down, and come up, and back, and down. Good, one last leg. Okay, come down to this position. Onto your left side, left side. Left elbow down. Okay, we're finishing off very soon. Left elbow down, bring your left knee at 90 degrees and press with the elbow to keep the core engaged. Now from here, we bring the left foot up and we grab it with the right hand. Pull the shoulder blades down and breathe. Fred, pull it and then with the strength of your leg, keep it up and then grab it again. Bring it closer with the strength of your leg. Relax. Remember, it's 90 degrees, 90 degrees. Grab it again, bring it closer, and then slowly relax. And last one, keep the engagement. Bring it closer, and then slowly relax. Bring it up, bring it closer. Okay. Good. Pony lady, lady pony. Left knee in. Again, maybe bring the knee a bit back, just a bit back, but it's more of it being in line, hands under the shoulders, neutral spine, uncurl the tailbone just a bit, but it's pretty much just a neutral spine. And then from here, you can see that from here. It's a cloudy day today, so not much lightning, lighting or lightning. Press down. And breathe. Without slower than your breathing. Okay, breathe in and engage your whole body, pushing our way through the hands. And then as you breathe out, press the foot against the knee. Left foot pushes in, engage the hip, engage the legs, engage the core, engage the arms. Four, five, four, three, two, and one. Feel like you're moving the heel away, even if it doesn't move. Four, five, feel it at the left hip. Four, external rotation. Three, keep the hip square. Two, keep the belly engaged. 
and one. Relax. Maybe bring the knee just a centimeter forward. Press against the hands. Pull the belly in and press the foot back. 90% of intensity now. Four, five. Engage the core, the chest. Four, four. The abs, the shoulders. Four, three. Two. And one, keep that intensity. Feel how you're shaking and move the, knee up, the foot away. Four, five, four, three. Keep the hips where they are. Two, and one. And release, maybe bring the knee just a centimeter forward. Inhale, and exhale. Okay, the ground is dear. Come to your half swastika. Left knee at 90 degrees, right knee at 90 degrees. Pull the belly in, send the sit bones back, open up the chest. And breathe. You might have to like, shift your weight slightly to find where you're feeling it. And then make your exhale slower than your inhale. Relax your shoulder blades down, relax your head. Again, your six bones are going towards the back. Keep the belly in, chest open. Exhale slower than you inhale. This is our passive stretch. Okay, inhale, engage the whole body. And then Exhale, press the left heel down. Pull the belly in, the chest forward, the six bones back. Four, five. Feel the left thigh, the hip working. Four, four. Press down through the heel. Keep the knee grounded. Four, three. Pull the shoulder blades down. Four, two. And one. Press the left knee down. Imagine like you're lifting the heel up. Four, five. Keep that same tension. Keep the hips square. Four, four. All the hips square is just nonsense. Just send your systems back. Four, three. Pull the belly in and pull. Four, two. And one. Okay. Release. Inhale. Engage the whole body. And exhale. Pull the shoulder blades down. Press the left heel down. Four, five. Pull the belly in. Four, four. 90% of your strength, four, three. Legs are engaging, core is engaging, belly is engaging, four, two. Keep pressing the heel down, four, one. And then start lifting the heel with the same intensity, 90%, four, five, four, three, two, and one. Release. Send the six ones back and chest forward. And slowly come out. Okay. Cheerleader position. Come up to standing, hands and fists by your body. And bring your left leg up. Left leg at 90 degrees. And again, work with your hip rotation. Knee up. Knee to the side. Internal rotate. Come down. Keep the internal rotation as you open. Bring the knee up, bring the foot in, and take the foot down. Two more. The whole body engaged. Fists with the arms, roll out and down. Keep the whole body engaged. Open, come down, rotate. Last one. Finish it up. On Instagram, it will now finish in 20 seconds. But that was the last exercise, so don't worry. We'll do some dynamic reaches, and then we'll do Shavasana. So when you're done, come down to lying on your back. Press the feet down. Feet slightly wider apart than your hips. And then as we inhale, we bring the hips up, the arms overhead, and the arms back. And then we bring the arms by our sides as we bring the hips down. 
press the feet down, inhale the hips up, engage the glutes as you move, move the knees away, the chest to the chin, and exhale the arms back by your sides as you bring the hips down. Three more, press the feet down, pull the belly in, lift the hips, move the knees away, chest to chin, and exhale, bring the arms by your sides, pull the belly in, hips come down when the hands touch down, when the exhale ends. Inhale, come back to reach, move the knees away, bring the arms overhead, chest to chin, and exhale, arms by your sides, knees away, belly in. Bring your knees to your chest, hug your knees tight. Feel like there's a struggle between the knees and the hands. Press down with the hands and push up with the knees to lengthen the lower back. Inhale deeply. And exhale, send the lower back closer to the ground. Inhale deeply. And exhale through the mouth. Inhale deeply. Exhale, pull the shoulder blades down, relax the muscle of the face. Bring the right leg on top of the left leg. Eagle legs, you can cross the shins or just cross the thighs. Open up the arms to the sides and across. Bring the hips slightly to the right to bring the knees to the left. Twisted eagle, pull the shoulder blades down, keep the belly and gaze towards the right. Inhale deeply to lengthen your whole back. If there's another twist that you prefer to keep with that. And exhale through the mouth, pull the shoulder blades down. Inhale deeply. And exhale through the mouth. Pull the belly in, bring the knees back to center, switch the legs, left leg on top, cross the shins, and bring the legs slightly, the hips slightly to the left, so that when you bring the knees to the right, from the hips all the way to the crown of the head, you're a straight line. Twist the, uh, we'll turn the head so that the whole spine is revolved. Pull the shoulder blades down, breathe in deeply. And exhale through the mouth. One more time, breathe in, lengthening through the six spots. And exhale through the mouth. Lengthen even more as you twist even more, pulling the shoulder blades down. Pull the belly in and inhale, bring the knees back to center, knees back to chest. Happy baby pose or any final pose you need to do. You can grab the shins or the soles of the feet and move the knees close to the ground as you reach the six bones away, pressing the lower back onto the ground. Relax the head, inhale deeply. And exhale through the mouth, press the knees closer to the ground, move the lower back longer away from you. Relax the face, inhale deeply. And exhale through the mouth. Good. You can stretch the legs if you choose to, or simply bring the knees in, extend the legs and turn the feet out. Bring your hands to the lower belly, inhale into the lower belly. And exhale through the mouth, relax. Savasana. Make sure that your shoulder blades are pulled down, the chin slightly tucked in so that your neck is long. You can find a slight posterior tilt with your pelvis, turning your pubic bone up and towards your chin so that you lengthen the lower back. You can have your feet turned out or even bend the knees and bring the knees together with the feet not with the part so that the lower back is long. If you'd rather lie face down or facing the side, that's perfect. Find a position that feels relaxing to you. And soften your gaze, close your eyes, relax completely. Allow your body to digest what's been happening for the next three, four minutes. Surrendering to full stillness. Enjoy the stillness and if any distraction comes up, just remind yourself how, how hard you've been working. And come back to this sense of victory, this sense of fulfillment. You made it. Now you might as well relax and enjoy stillness.
Finish in a seated position, reaching up through the back of our head, reaching down through our shoulder blades. We will inhale deeply, deeply, deeply from our roots, the pelvic floor, all the way up to the crown of the head. We will exhale through the mouth, letting go of any, any worry, preoccupation, letting gravity take hold of it, letting earth take it away. Inhale deeply. Exhale through the nose, sitting up tall. Just allow the practice to settle in your body. Allow every cell of your body to remember what it is like to be healthy, to be happy, to be alive. And then with your next inhale, just bring your hands to your chest, palms at heart center or palms together. Thank you for your hard work. Thank you for doing it today, for going for it. The light in me honors and celebrates the life, the life in you. Namaste.